Hello, hi, I'm Lukas, uh, and this is supposed to be um, an experiment trying to make the Ranker tool translatable using the recently released Toolforge i18n library. Uh, so I want to follow my own documentation on how to make a tool translatable, see if it's all working out. Ideally, this uh, stream slash video will become a demonstration of how to do that with a tool. Um, or I will just notice, oops, I have all of these steps still missing and uh, we'll work on them and then eventually um, maybe make another video of another tool uh, to demonstrate how to make a tool translatable. Uh, so Toolforge i18n uh, was extracted out of the Lexeme like, forms library and has some nice features. It has support for the gender magic word, for the plural magic word, including um, plural forms in languages where it's not just uh, singular plural, but maybe dual or uh, few and many numbers. Uh, so that should all be supported in theory. Uh, it has a use length parameter with QQX as well, and some other nice features, XSS protection as well. Uh, and there's some documentation for how to use it in a Flask tool and a little bit for non-Flask tools, but today we are looking at a Flask tool. So we'll start at how to set it up. And the tool that we're looking at is called Ranker, by the way, it is just for editing uh, ranks of several statements at once. And this is the uh, localhost development version that I have running. Um, so I have source code for a tool. It's written in Python using the Flask framework. That's all correct. Um, I broadly follow this tutorial. I actually created it using the, uh, uh, Lucas Werkmas, uh, what's it called? Toolforge no, cookie cutter, Toolforge. That's it, uh, this template. And eventually, I might even add um, Toolforge IAT and support directly to the template, but for now, it was just created doing that. So uh, let's start by adding Toolforge IAT and Flask with a Flask extra to the dependencies, which in my case are in requirements.in. Uh, so I already used the Toolforge library, which is nice and unrelated. And now I'm adding Toolforge IAT in. And because I use pip tools, I now use pip compile to compile this requirements.in file, which just has um, the general dependencies, uh, and in most cases without a specific version number, into a requirements.txt file, which has all the versions, uh, all the dependencies spin to exact version. Uh, so that's how I like to do it in my tools. You can also do it um, differently. Um, you could have your dependencies in the PyProject TOML, you could have them directly in requirements.txt, um, whatever. So this is going to depend on your project. Um, and now that I've added it to dependencies, so we can see uh, in the diff, it just added uh, the Babel library um, and toolforge i18n and otherwise no new dependencies. So let's just run pip sync, uh, which is also from pip tools to actually install the new dependencies. Uh, so now it should all be available in the virtual environment. So if I now type import to forge ITN, let's just work. Yeah, there we go. Okay, next step. In the source code, add a file tool translations config, which looks at least like this. Let's do that. Edit this file and paste in from toolforge ITN import the translation config and export a member called config, which is just this config. And for now it's empty. We will definitely add some things in there later, but for now it can just be an empty config. Um, and there's some API documentation for this if you want to follow it. Um, you can click these links and then read about the translation config, what all the different members are. Uh, variables is the most important one that we're going to use, but we might run into the others as well. Um, doesn't really matter. Create the ITN directory with en.json and qqq.json files, which both just look like this for now. So, oops, I'm still in the editor create i18n and edit en.json with this content. Uh, make sure that's indented with tabs, not spaces, I think. Yeah, I think actually, uh, what did I do in the other tools? Yeah, it should be tabs, okay. So my name here is Lukas Bergmeister, and then just copy that to itnqqq.json. And we're going to add the actual messages in there later. Um, but for now, it's just a little bit of metadata um, with the authors. And then TranslateWiki is going to potentially add other authors in there 
well, probably not in en.json, but like if someone edits the message documentation in qqq.json, then their name will be added to the list of authors there. And in all the translation files, um, once people start creating translations, the authors will be collected there. So um, in the source code, probably in app.py add the following import. I'm not actually completely sure we'll need the message import, but we can always remove it later. So let's just copy this whole line in app.py uh, from toolforge import toolforge itn and message. And then after creating the app, at this line. Uh, app equals, there's the app. Um, let's just put it right afterwards. Um, and I'm not sure we'll actually need the i18n, so we could probably also do just this, just initialize the plugin in the uh, Flask app and not assign it to anything, but I think it's also useful to keep it, so let's just do it this way. Um, in all the templates which contain HTML tag, hopefully this is just a single template, so in my case it is, uh, it's called based on HTML, change the opening and closing tags to look like this. Uh, so templates uh, based on HTML. So currently it says lang equals en, and that's not going to be true anymore. It's not necessarily going to be in English, it's actually going to be in the interface language code, which gets initialized by the library automatically. Um, and so this will return the lang and also the dir attribute uh, so that we know uh, which language and direction the HTML is in. And then uh, the closing tag should look like this. And that just, uh, the pop HTML lang doesn't actually return anything, but it just matches uh, the push HTML lang up here. So there's a stack of languages and uh, later down in the tool I can push and pop other languages on and off the stack, and it'll make sure that it doesn't add redundant lang attributes when it's not actually necessary, and the pop is just necessary to know um, where each element ends, and it makes sure at the end of the request um, that um, you haven't forgotten to um, close the stack anywhere. And if you heard me speaking there slightly slower for a second, that was because I had to bam another spammer on Twitch. I'm very sorry. It's very annoying. Uh, so let's save this and just quickly check. Do I have any other HTML tags? Nope. The base template is the only one. That is nice. Um, optionally set up CI for the tool and run PyTest in it. I'm pretty sure I have that. So this recommends Wikimedia GitLab. Um, Currently in this tool, I'm still using GitHub Actions. Uh, I should fix that at some point, but in GitHub Actions, I run make check and the make file includes PyTest. So we're all set there. Um, if I didn't have that, I would want to add that because um, running PyTest is pretty important because that will make sure that the translations are all uh, safe. Um, and actually, if I just run make check now, we should. Uh, okay, let's ignore Flaggate for the moment. Let's just run PyTest directly. We should see, yes, a few tests for I18N. Um, so right now, just one test that the documentation matches. Like if I add uh, a message here and call it, uh, okay, I need to fix Emacs at their local. Hang on, I can just copy that from. Like theme forms, right? ITN dot their locals. Yeah, copy that to ITN just so Emacs behaves properly. Um, and now if I press enter, it indents with a tab and it's four spaces wide. Okay, good. So if I add a message here now, some message, this message is not documented. Uh, so that's a mistake that I might make as a developer, and then PyTest uh, will yell at me. Uh, it's, a, it's not that readable at this font size. Um, let's quickly zoom out. Um, so uh, it checks that all the message keys should be documented, and right now they aren't. Um, and if this is a bit confusing, I could, I think, look at this file, line 37, and there should be some documentation uh, about the failing test case, although PyTest doesn't show it by default. Um, so let's remove that from 
en.json again for the moment. So we're still at zero messages. Um, yeah, there's also a hint here, the check translations flag. Um, I am actually going to add that to this tool. Uh, so by default, all of these checks in uh, PyTest, like the one that we've just seen here, also get run each time you start the tool. Um, so uh, this is especially important if someone on translate wiki has put uh, some HTML tags in the messages, like a script tag or uh, an image that loads an external resource, and you don't want to deploy that to your tool. You don't want your visitors to have to run random JavaScript from some translator or whatever, um, or to have uh, their IP address revealed because the browser will load the image from somewhere else or whatever. Um, so some of the checks that are run automatically in PyTest include that all that only a certain set of HTML elements is allowed and only a certain set of HTML attributes is allowed. And all of these checks by default also run when the tool starts up, uh, which is a safe way to do it. Um, so that way, if you didn't run the test in CI, if you just merged the translations from Translate Wiki and didn't notice that there was some uh, malicious thing in there, then the tool will just not start, which is not nice, but it's at least safe and doesn't put your tool's users in danger. Um, but I have set up uh, these uh, GitHub Actions CI, um, where I run PyTest uh, via the make file. And so I'm going to run these tests um, before each deployment of the tool and before merging any new translations. So for this tool, it's redundant to check the translations as well. And so I'm going to slightly speed up um, the startup of the tool by putting in the tool translations config, the check translations flag, which is documented here, but this is basically everything that I just said right now. So that is true by default, but I'm going to say check translations equals false. And then the translations are only checked by PyTest, but not uh, when the tool starts up. And so the tool just starts up a little bit faster. Uh, I measured it for Lexeme forms, and it was something like, I think more than one second in Toolforge. I think a few seconds uh, for a tool that has a fair amount of translations at this point. Um, yeah, so the library is safe by default, but you can make it slightly more efficient. And then you're just responsible as the tool revel developer for making sure that you run PyTest in CI. Um, so now we're done with all of these steps already. Hopefully I didn't forget anything there. And then the next part would be actually adding some messages, which um, is documented in a separate page because that's something that I now need to do uh, to migrate the existing tool. Um, and then also whenever I keep developing the tool, I'll keep coming back to uh, that page. There's also this step, um, registering the project on translatewiki.net. Um, that is for later after I've added some messages. So I'm not going to do that just yet. Instead, let's look at some of this. Well, I mean, that's first, uh, we have the source code here. Let's just restart Flask and reload the local version of the tool. Um, and we see nothing has changed so far. If I go use lang equals de, uh, we'll not see much of a difference, but in the dev tools we should see. Um, yeah, so now it says that the HTML overall is in German, supposedly. If I, actually, if I put in Arabic, then yeah. Uh, yeah, then some things start to look broken um, because everything's written right to left and we haven't properly marked up this text because it's not translatable yet. Um, so let's start adding some actual messages. We can start with the tool name, I guess, uh, which is here and also up here in the header bar. Um, so to add a message, we need to add it to en.json and qqq.json and then use the message function in the template and or Python code. So. Let's start by adding it to the en.json file. And we'll just call it the tool-name, and the tool name is ranker. And in qqq.json, uh, tool name, 
It writes some documentation for the message. The name of the tool. Uh, rank. Uh, the English name ranker refers to the Wikidata concept of rank, uh, for which I'm going to refer to um, whatever the right Wikibase message is, which would be probably in lib i18n. Uh, okay, that's not ideal. How about repo? That's better. Let's use this message. So message mw wikibase diff you rank compare uh, and is also a pun probably untranslatable on the rancor a creature from star wars at least that's how i seem to remember the name having been chosen um and just let translators know they're not expected to translate that pun uh and let me just quickly check that i um did the wiki text here correctly so i'll just go to translate wiki.net user lucas werkmeister sandbox and just preview what i wrote in there uh and see that the template works uh oops fix those backslashes that emacs added there the name of the tool refers compare wikibase if you rank yeah and then it shows this and yeah so that lets translators see how this message was translated for them so if i temporarily change my language to oops that's not good let's zoom out a little bit to german yes leave the page that's fine yeah so now i can see uh here the german text of this message which is rang and then i would have to pick as a translator into german how would i translate the tool name ranger i don't know um whatever that's up to the translators i'm just trying to give them all the information that they are going to need so that formats as expected so that's fine so we have the message here and now we need to use it and number one we use it in the index template where it just says here in a big heading ranker so let's say we use a message here and the message is called uh tool name and if i now reload the page um why is it broken do i need to restart this oh apparently yes i didn't realize that would be necessary okay anyway so now it's working uh and if i now switch to a different language we will see that the whole html element this is probably too small to be readable but the html says lang equals de and then the heading element has inside a span which says lang equals en. Uh, so um, the library knows that this message had to fall back to English. So it uh, wraps it in a span which tags it as being English and being in the right direction as well, left to right. Um, and once we do that for this message, um, that should fix the wrong punctuation that we see here where the dot is at the end of the message. So let's just try that out. What do we call this? That's the, uh, I had some naming scheme for this in Wikidata image positions, I think. Uh, index paragraph one. Yeah, sure, that works. So let's say on, I mean, we can copy the text from here. Oh, there's a to do there. I didn't realize I still had a to do there. Well, let's delete that to do. I think that's not necessary anymore. So here we have the message in IETN, en JSON. We add a message and we just call it uh, the index paragraph one. You can call it whatever you want, of course. Um, in qqq.json, we document index paragraph one. Uh, as how do I document it in the other one? 
Uh, first paragraph on the tools index page is driving the tool. Yeah, that works. Uh, just copy the right text there. So save this, save this, and then in the template, use message tool, no, index paragraph one. Right now it's the only paragraph, but I don't know, maybe I'll write more text there eventually. Um, and now if I reload this, really? Oh, right, right, I actually had that earlier, but then we moved it here, but now that the files exist, I can do that, so extra, so Flask has support for reloading um, on some non-Python files, and that's what I do here. So this effectively runs, if I uh, copy this, uh, it runs Flask minus minus debug, run, minus extra files, and then en.json, qqq.json. Um, so now Flask should automatically be reloaded each time I change the ITN n files. Um, yeah, and so now the Full stop is at the right end of the sentence here because this thing gets wrapped in a span with language en, dir, left to right. If I remove the dir attribute, then you would see the dot on the wrong side again. Um, yeah. You can also see that the rest of the tool is kind of partially right to left. I think that's Bootstrap's fault. I think that's something that I will have to fix at some point. Um, yeah. But that's not the main focus right now. Mainly I'm just focusing on making things translatable at all. And we can start to see if I add use lang equals qqx to the message, uh, to the URL. Then we start to see uh, some parts. Um, so this is just like a media wiki where you can get it to show you the message key. And everything that's now in parentheses is a message that we properly translated with um, this message key. Um, and everything else that's still proper English, like Ranker up here, documentation, Toolforge, and so on, everything else here is still um, text that hasn't been translated yet. So this is one good way to um, find out what hasn't been translated yet. Uh, we've kind of stopped looking at the documentation. Um, but I think... I hopefully said most of the important things, and I hopefully didn't say anything that isn't also in the documentation. That's kind of the main point. Um, yeah, I've written some documentation uh, with Wikitext formatting. I've used the message th thing in the templates like this. Uh, you can also use it in Python. I don't know if that's going to be needed in this tool. Uh, probably it's going to be only in templates like this. Uh, we are not at any very messages that need variables yet. Uh, we still need to add some messages that are just uh, plain text. Like up here, for instance, we, need, we would like to reuse the tool name. And that's going to be in the base, dot, uh, base template, right? Sorry. Um, oh, also here, yeah. So in the HTML title block, we want message tool name. Uh, and we need to do one other thing there because right now, if I do use lang equals de, you can see uh, that we have some HTML markup in there because the title um, doesn't support that. So here we need to just strip tags, which is a Jinja uh, built in thing. And then uh, that's that. Um, we also need to use the tool name in the nav bar, which is here. There's ranker. Message tool name. And then if I now use using equals QQX, we can see the tool name up here as well in the navbar. And then we need three more messages for the documentation, we can toolforge and source code. Um, you know what, let's have two terminals. One of them is always for i18n, en.json and qqq.json, and the second terminal is always for the templates. Uh, so this is still going to be the base template. Um, documentation, we can be a toolforge and source code. And this is honestly something I might might as well just copy from uh, Wikidata image positions um, because it's going to be the same thing. Oh, also skip to main content, right? That's another thing that um, I have in all of the tools. So 
Uh, yeah, let's just copy those four messages. Skip to main content, documentation, Wikimedia tool, forge, source code. Yeah, those are all the same here. So skip to main content is if you load the tool and then press tab. Um, that's for people who use uh, screen readers or stuff. It uh, skips past the nav bar and straight into uh, the main element so I can start actually using the tool and don't have to tab. Like otherwise I would have to, oops, um, tab past the tool name, documentation, we can get tool forge, source forge, login link all the time. Uh, so that's what that link is for. Um, so we copy all of those messages from my other tool and paste them in here. Um, and copy the documentation for them as well. Uh, do I need to change anything in that documentation? Oops, that should actually be um, before the index paragraph one. Uh, yeah, I pasted it in the wrong place. Let's fix that. So skip to main content, text for a link, blah, blah, blah. text for a link to the tools documentation, text to the hosting platform, we can do tool forge. Text will link to the source code and navigation bar. Yeah, I think all those message documentations are fine to just copy paste. And then in the base HTML, we use for skip to main content message. What was it called? Skip to main content. Very unimaginative message key. And this one I think was nav dash documentation, right? Yeah. So message nav documentation. Uh, message nav tool forge or yeah just tool forge not really tool forge um and na message nav source code uh and there we are that's all translated up here now and if i load the tool without use lang it still looks exactly the same um Then what would be the next thing that we need to resonate? There's the wiki thing, entity ID, property ID, uh, and this button. So all of that is just more messages without parameters. Maybe let's go into something that's a bit more complicated, a message that actually needs parameters. And for that, I think we can look at the login link because uh, let me just quickly actually log in there. And because this is a localhost version, I'll have to click this link. Uh, None of you should ever do this, by the way, um, because that means giving uh, potentially anyone else on your computer access to your OAuth account. Sorry, my headset turned itself off there for a second. Uh, so now I'm logged in, and it says logged in as Lukas Werkmeister. And um, if you've worked with i18n for a while, you might smell uh, a need for a gender in there, uh, like in, I think it was Italian where I was first told about this, uh, that uh, ideally this would need to be autorizzato or autorizzata, I think, depending on whether the user uh, is male or female. And uh, if neither, then I think the translation uses O slash A at the end. Um, and Toolforge ITN supports that, but for that, uh, we need to look at the section for variables. So messages con contain variables, aka parameters, um, just like in MediaWiki. And in the message text, they're written as dollar sign by a number, so dollar one, dollar two, etc. And in the documentation, you document them if you're being nice. Um, and in the Python code, we use variable name. Variable names for those messages, um, and in the translation config, you map, you define what those names are. Um, so, if I want a message like uh, logged in as dollar one, um, let's try to make that from scratch. Uh, so, I, I'll copy this in the end from the other tool, but let's try to put it together just for demo purposes. So it will be something like. Uh, logged in as, and then it'll say logged in as dollar one. Um, and then in the tool translation configs, I say the variables are uh, addict from the message key, which in this case is logged 
in as to a list of variable names. And in this case, for now, we're just starting with one variable name, which is user underscore name. And then in the template, or rather in this case, it's not a template, it's actually in the source code, in the authentication area, uh, we have um, message equals message. So now we are actually using the message function that we logged uh, that we imported earlier, logged in as with the keyword argument username equals user info name. And let's just return that for a second and see what happens. So that's not complete yet, but let's see how that looks here. Uh, did I not save this? Or do I need to add the. Aha, uh -huh, I had not saved it, in fact. Yeah, saving the file helps. So now, um, I mean, first of all, it's unreadable just because I didn't wrap it in um, NAS band text, but we see logged in as Lucas Werkmeister. And if I say, um, let's just put it in the English message for now, uh, just for demonstration purposes, uh, gender dollar one autorizato, I think. To, uh, uh, como? No, that's probably not correct Italian. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's just for demonstration purposes. So now it will say, for me, autorizato como Lucas Werkmeister. And if I was logged in as someone else, it might say autorizata at the end. Um, let's remove that again. And instead, just say uh, logged in as dollar one. We'll leave this gender thing there. As a hint to translators, they can use gender in the translation. They don't need to. Probably they still will, even if they don't need it. Like um, if I look at the translations for uh, some other tools, I see tons of gender in there that's not needed. It's just um, difficult to tell translators that it's not needed. Um, and it doesn't hurt, so that's fine. Um, and um, one important thing here uh, that is documented somewhere down here, uh, I've skipped past some of this, but the gender thing is documented here. Um, one important thing is that uh, the name that I've given to the variable here, user underscore name, is actually special. Um, so if I called this uh, something else, then the gender thing wouldn't work correctly, I think. Uh, or at least the translation tests would definitely start failing um, because at least the tests need to know what the expected type of each variable is. And uh, the convention that I've settled in is just to use a variable name for that. So if the variable is called user underscore name or user name underscore something, uh, then it's expected to be used with the gender magic word. And if it's, uh, I think, num underscore something, then it's used with the uh, plural magic word. Yeah. Um, so the variable name is not quite free to choose. Like, if you have a need for more than one username in a message, you can have username A and username B. Um, but you shouldn't use, you shouldn't call your username variable something else uh, because the translation tests at least have to know uh, what the type of the variable is supposed to be to check that it actually matches. Uh, both the English message and all the, also all the translations. So if someone has um, like tried to translate a message that uses both plural and gender and has mixed up the variable numbers like dollar one and dollar two instead of dollar two and dollar one or something, then the tests will uh, know which variable is supposed to be what based on the variable name, and it'll start to complain. And then uh, you'll probably have to go to, on translate wiki and fix the translation. Um, and there's one more thing here, um, which is, uh, I think it's mentioned way down at the end. Uh, yeah, so all of this, I'm not actually going to read through this. You can read through this later if you want, or I'll just explain it now. Um, if you look at the source code that we had earlier, if I don't return this message, um, actually the tool shows logged in as Lucas Werkmeister with a link here, right? And so that link, um, so we need really two different arguments in the message. We need the plain username uh, for the gender magic word. And then we also need the formatted link. Um, 
So that is going to be really two different things in translation locked in as dollar one, which is the um, which is going to be the full link, and dollar two is just the username. And I'm going to put that in the translations config. So the first variable is now the user link, and the second one is the username. Um, and then here, the user link is what we had down there. So let's just say username equals this thing. User link equals this thing down here. Uh, now that's not going to work. Um, because user link is already the function. Okay. Um, actually, let's not make it a variable then. Say username equals username and user link equals user link of username. And don't put it in a variable because otherwise um, you'll have to think of a separate na name for it. So if I now return that, um, yes, I did forget a comma. Thank you, Python. Um, now we have a link in here, and the text is still unreadable because it's still missing that last little bit, which is the markup uh, around it. So let's just return markup this plus uh, the message plus markup closing span. And now it should look correct again. Yeah, logged in as Lucas Werkmeister. Uh, that full stop at the end isn't right, is it? If I go to the real tool, is that there? Login. No, it's not there. Okay. I just added that to the translation for no reason. Let's remove that. Um, there. That looks better. Um, so now we have two arguments in the message. Uh, one that gets actually shown with just the full link and everything, which gets rendered by the Python code uh, here and then passed into the message. And the other argument is the username. Oops. Um, and I'm actually passing them in here in the different order than they are in the translation. So in the translation, $1 was the link, and $2 was the username. Um, and I've done it the other way around here because I find it more readable. Um, whatever. Uh, and if I now use use lang equals qqx, we can. Um, it's not 100% readable, it's a bit long, but we can see. Um, that this now shows the logged in as message with the three arguments. Username is just a string, and the user link is actually markup with a link, and then also a bidirectional isolate element, all of that stuff, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. And now I just want to check is this all exactly the same as in my other tools, or did I mess anything up when I redid it? Gender.2 logged in as dollar one. Oh, what, really? In this tool, I had the full stop at the end? Yeah. Anyway, that's called uh, not logged in as. It's called nav logged in, fine, and comes directly after the other nav uh, messages. That makes sense. Uh, so let's change the translation config, nav logged in. Um, and here in the translations tool translations config we have nav logged in with those two variables user link user name that's correct um we still need the message documentation i'll just um copy that from there so nav logged in is documented as indicator in the nav bar that the user is logged in with parameters dollar one the username as a link to the user page dollar two the username as plain text can be used with the gender magic word if gender is not needed the representation can leave out dollar two completely um experience says that translators do not see this text or at least don't understand what i mean by it and they'll just uh include dollar two in the message even if it's not needed and that is fine uh yeah and in the tool source code, um, I think in Wikidata image positions, it probably looks a bit different. Authentication area. Uh, oh, what? There I put the CSRF token in there. That's random. OK. Um, but yeah, there's message nav logged in, username, username, blah. Yeah. But that's all fine. Um, 
Oh, ha! Huh. I need to change the message name here still. Uh, nav logged in. Otherwise, that wouldn't have worked. Uh, logged in. Message. Yeah, let's call it that. Logged in message. And then that should all work. Yeah, so now I'm logged in. Uh, what we also should fix is the case where we're not logged in, where it currently just says uh, log in as hard coded English. Uh, let's fix that. So uh, I think in the other tool I put that right before. Yeah. So I'll just copy paste this part. Um, nav log in, log in, and in qqq.json. Uh, text for a link to log into the tool in navigation bar menu, identical to log in, that's fine. Um, don't need to change the translation config here because this is a message without variables. We don't need to configure anything there. And then here, um, I'll have to split up the markup a little bit more. Plus message nav log in. Is that right? I think so. Uh, let's open it in a private window. That looks good. It says log in and it's a link to the login page. And if I add use lang equals qqx, it shows nav login. Okay. So I think the whole nav bar is now translated, both with and without um, being logged in. Um, and then there are several other parts. So a lot of the rest of the work of translating this tool would now just be fairly mechanical, just going through and adding more messages. I'm wondering if, just for demonstration purposes, there's any message where plural support is needed. Um, because if there isn't, it kind of feels like I might as well stop the recording here and say that the video uh, showcasing how to make a tool translatable is uh, done for now. But if I go to, say, Wikidata on, I don't know, Q42, P18, actually on Q64, so on Berlin, the image property. Um, ah, just one image, okay. Hmm, so this says statement, if I go to, if I use the P31 property, uh, so the instance of property, what will it then say up there? Statements, oh. Wow, did I, did I manually implement correct plural support there just for English in the hard-coded English message? <laughs> I mean, that's definitely feels like an example where I can just showcase plural support then. Oops, I didn't mean to close that. Uh, what does the template look like? So that's the template edits.html. Yes. Um, statement. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So if can edit you else or otherwise once you log in, you can edit the rank of the following statements or statement on format entity. Okay. Cool. Um, so that's a case where we can add a message definitely, but also um, actually looking at this format entity for a second right now, uh, I think that's in W format, right? Yeah, so right now it always uses English and we can change that. Um, but actually then I need to pass in the language code. No, let's not do that right now. Um, Let's do that. Let's leave that for later. Um, wondering what to do about this part, which either says you or once you log in, you can edit. Is that something that you can usefully put into the translation? I don't think so. I think I think the cleanest thing to do there is really just to make it two messages, and most of the message text will just be the same, and that's fine. Um, yeah, that's probably cleaner. So let's just sketch out what the new version will look like. If can edit, then message 
edit uh, do we call it paragraph one again um, what do I do here it's all called index or is it did I call anything intro no Meh, let's just go with paragraph one then and then uh, logged in and else message edit paragraph one not logged in or logged out logged out is cleaner i think and then end if and the message will in fact need uh parameters um one of the arguments is going to be or two of the arguments is going to be the formatted entity for the property ID and entity ID. Um, and then another argument is going to be the number of statements. Uh, let's start with that. Uh, so as I mentioned before, some variable names are special. And if we want plural support, we need to call it variable num or num underscore something. So let's just say num statements equals statements pipe length. Um, that's one argument we pass in. I'm just wondering how we split this into multiple uh, lines. I think if I do this, it's probably much more readable, right? Oops. Uh, Emacs is being smart about the uh, correct way to indent this. Actually, no, let's do it like this. Uh, yeah, that looks good to me. So we have the num statements equals statements uh, pipe length. We have the formatted property ID equals um, all of this. And then the formatted i think entity id is the other one right equals yeah all of that um and then we just do exactly the same in the else block just with a different message key um we could i guess we could in theory deduplicate this and say instead um uh, we put the message key into a variable in the if then else and then use the variable. I think it's it's actually clearer this way if you see the message key right next to the three um, argument names. So in the tool translation config, I need to now add another message. And the message key was edit paragraph one logged in and logged out. And the three... Um, Uh, the three variables are num statements, statements, formatted property ID, and formatted entity ID. Uh, I was just wondering what the best order for them is. If I want the num statements to be dollar one, dollar two, dollar three, doesn't really matter at the end of the day. So in the translations, let's add edit paragraph one logged in. And it should be, uh, we can copy that from the template earlier. Uh, and it should be you can edit the rank of the following dollar two, right? Dollar two is the one that we set for the property ID and then plural. Dollar one is the number and either statement or statements. Um, and then on dollar three, and then colon at the end, right? Yes. Um, and then I think we can remove all of the old markup. And then, uh, Oops, I added that to the wrong file. I am in qqq.json. I need to be in en.json. 
anyway, and we have two copies of that file, edit paragraph um, one logged in and logged out. And then what logged out one should say, once you log in, you can edit, right? Is that, I removed it here too quickly, but yeah. Once you log in, comma, you blah, blah, can edit, okay. So now if I go here and then also um, close this tab, by the way, and then also do that for P18 again, where it, there was just one statement. It says you can edit the rank of the following instance of statements of the following image statement. Yeah. And if I do use lang equals qqx, we can see that the translations are being used. The number statements in this case is one. Formatted property ID, formatted entity ID. Yeah. Uh, and just for fun, let's demonstrate um, that this is not uh, a security problem. So if there's, um, eh, damn it. If there's uh, some HTML markup in the item name, uh, okay, let's use the P31 then it gets correctly escaped and it doesn't run the alert um, thanks to the markup save library. Uh, just wanted to quickly show that. Um, yeah, so now we have statements and statements uh, correctly. And as I mentioned at the beginning, in some other languages, um, you can have more plural forms than that. I think, uh, what was an example? Source formatters. Right. In, I don't even remember what language this was, but like one byte. So there's uh, byte just as a loan word, uh, like bits and bytes. Uh, one byte, two byte tie, few byte t, or other byte tov. What language is that again? It was something in the east of Germany, I think, slash west of Poland. No, was it just Polish? Hmm, but here it just says singular pol plural. I thought I got it from something like Sorbian or whatever. Uh, something that had multiple, um, had more than just singular plural, but I don't know where I got it from. <laughs> uh, where did I do this? Upper Sorbian, there we go. Uh, the history size message in MediaWiki. Uh, and Upper Sorbian is, was I at least geographically roughly correct? Um, yeah, part of Saxony today. Yeah. Uh, and the MediaWiki core uh, history size. Uh, message this one i think yeah hsb is the language code so there they had byte by tie by t by tof and that's where i got that from and in theory that should all be supported by um two forge i18n as well um although of course it depends on whether translators actually add that many plurals otherwise it'll just fall back to the other form anyway um but like i think russian also has uh, more plural forms than just single plural so it's not just obscure uh, languages from Saxony. Anyway, uh, enough of all of that. Um, that all says you can edit the rank of the following statement or statements. Um, we need to document the message that we've just added. Uh, so go back to qq.json and document, uh, what was it? Edit paragraph one logged in. Um, how do we even document this? Uh, paragraph on the page to edit the rank of a set of statements if the user is logged in. See also message VM, uh, WM, sorry, a little bit of German sneak in there. Uh, so that is going to be ranker. Edit paragraph one logged out uh, if the user is logged out. And the parameters are 
dollar one is uh, the number of um, statements to be edited. Dollar two is um, the label of the wiki data property being edited. And dollar three, the label of the Wikidata entity, usually item. Hang on. It's not just Wikidata, it's also um, mm, it also gives search data and comments of the entity, e.g. Wikidata item or uh, media Commons file being edited. Um, I think this is a bit confusing. The label for Wikipedia property being edited uh, because the property isn't being edited. How do I phrase that? Um, uh, whose statements are? Uh, to which eh. how do I just how do I make that not confusing? Also, I just noticed something here. Is that a typo I made in the other tool as well? Needed. Yeah, I sure did. Okay, I'll have to deploy the fix for that later. Dang it. Um. The label of the I'm starting to think it might be more it might be easier to document this message if I swap dollar one uh, dollar two and dollar three around and say first this is the entity where the statements are and this is the property uh Selecting the statements. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. Um, let's say dollar three and dollar two and swap the order in here. My headset also turned itself off again. Sorry about that. Um, and then we first have this documentation. So and this is now dollar two, the label of the entity uh, whose statements are um, being edited, and then dollar three, the label of the weekly data property selecting the state statements to edit, e.g., instance of. Let's hope that's somewhat clear. If it's confusing, um, the translation documentation can also be edited on Translate Wiki, by the way, later. Um, Let's just edit the template, uh, even though it doesn't make a difference, um, and swap those around just so it matches the uh, order in the um, dollar one, dollar two, dollar three. So it's slightly as confusing, and see that this still looks correct, and we didn't actually accidentally swap it out. You can edit the rank of the following. Oops, I did make something up. Okay, or did I just? not save some file yet. Num statements, then formatted entity ID, then formatted property ID. So formatted entity ID is dollar two. Hmm, that should be correct. Oops. Uh, what did I do wrong? Hmm. 
Ah, that's what I did wrong. I only edited one of the two messages with the same problem. And I happen to edit the one that's not uh, being used. Uh, that's the problem with having two messages, I guess. There we go. Now it's uh, again says following instance of statements on Berlin. So, uh, also a quick note on this. So earlier I had used, oops, what the fuck did Emacs do there? Uh, here, earlier I'd used the message MW template. So that's linked to a media wiki message. Um, wiki based if you rank, blah, blah. Um, and here I used message WM, which is to link to any Wikimedia related message. So that's the message group that all the um, Wikimedia tools get added to. And then I used the message key, edit paragraph one logged out, and I added ranker beforehand um, because all of the messages on Translate Wiki. Uh, of all the tools on Translate Wiki, they're going to end up in the same message group. And so they have this prefix. Um, so like if I go to Lexeem forms on Translate Wiki, you can also see there um, that the message key starts with Wikidata Lexeem forms. Uh, so that's the tool name. And then description with forms and senses is the actual message key as it appears in the tool, right? If I go to i18n en JSON there, that's the actual message key in the tool as the tool sees it. And then translate wiki when the messages get um, imported and exported in and out of translatewiki.net, it adds that um, uh, to the title so it's unambiguous. Uh, and we only need to know about that if we want to link to the other tools. So I'm just assuming that. Um, when these messages that I'm adding right now eventually get added to Translate Wiki, um, then it'll use the prefix ranker, and I'm assuming that's not taken yet. Um, yeah. And then hopefully this link will work out. If it doesn't work out, if I did something wrong here, then someone else can also fix the wiki text on Translate Wiki, uh, where you actually have like a pre uh, preview function and everything. Uh, but there's one important thing still to do, which is to duplicate this whole documentation for the logged out version. If the user is not logged in, uh, and also, and then the whole message documentation for the parameters is the same, blah, blah, blah. So just we have those two messages cross-linking to each other uh, so that translators know what's going on there and can um, easily reuse most of the translation um, and only adjust the part in the beginning that's actually different. All right, uh, so that's, oops, wrong window. That should work here. Um, yeah. Let's uh, do one more thing actually. Let's check that everything is actually working by running PyTest. Oops. Oh, I need to activate the version environment first. Never mind that. OK, so that works. And you can see here now, see there's a bunch of tests in en.json for each message. So if I run, uh, if I let it show verbosely just the tests in i18n, you can see that it checks the message formatting. It checks the HTML elements and the variables for each of the various messages um, that we have. And all of the tests pass right now, so that's great. If I had forgotten to document this message, oops, um, if I forgot to document one of the messages and then ran the tests, then there would be an error there, extra items in the right set um, that's telling me that one of the messages is not documented. Um, yeah. Actually, if I run make check now, all the tests. Uh, flake eight is unhappy. Line too long. In the tool translations config here. Fine. We can switch. Uh, we can just split that across multiple lines. Uh, oops. Just to make uh, 
uh, flag eight happy. And now is it going to work? Yay. Uh, so you'll notice it doesn't complain about the unused import of message anymore uh, because we actually used uh, the message function in uh, the Python code here. But otherwise, of course, we could have just removed the import and that would have been fine. So I think that is most of what I have to say about Toolforge it n at the moment. Um, it seems to be working. The one final step would be, so I, there's still a bunch of messages to add, uh, like all of these button texts and these button texts down there, reason for the preferred blank, blah, 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 all of that um, still needs to be uh, made translatable, but that's not something I need to do in this uh, stream slash video. Um, I'll just do that later. Uh, the one thing that's left is this step. Um, which I'm not going to do right now, but at least I should talk about it, I think. Uh, so what happens is there's, uh, we need to add the project to translate wiki. Uh, what you get, what we expect, blah, 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 blah. Uh, that's all something for you to read through. Um, so I would fill in the new project template. Oops, no script, please allow this request. Um, the project information, the name is Ranker. Homepage is, I guess, um, this page and the project link is ranker.toolforge.org. Code repository is, um, ah, well, that's the thing. Uh, if I link to GitLab as the source code repository, then I need to also uh, make sure that CI runs on GitLab and not GitHub. Okay, so that that is one more thing for me to do. Uh, right now we have uh, the GitHub Actions running this, and I will have to migrate that to GitLab CI um, using something like this setup here. Um, unless, of course, I want to have the Translate Wiki pull requests on GitHub. Like that's what I actually have uh, for Lexeme like, forms. So here the pull requests come in. Oh. Oops, uh, there is a set of localization updates that I still need to deploy, apparently. Um, yeah, so here um, the translation updates come in on GitHub and the tests are run uh, and check that everything actually works. Um, but I would like to do that on GitLab instead. Uh, and one pragmatic reason is that if there's a new pull request on GitLab, I get an email for it and I don't just uh, miss the translations for two weeks, uh, like I apparently do on GitHub. Oops. Um, so yeah, I will definitely want to link to GitLab here and ask Translate Wiki to please make merge requests on GitLab. Uh, but for me to do that, uh, I will definitely want to first migrate the CI to GitLab Actions. Um, yeah, source branch uh, would be main, hopefully you're calling it main and not master, but whatever. Target branch. Uh, hang on. I don't actually remember if this is main or IETN. I think it's IETN, right? But I would just have to check Wikidata image, image positions, translatable, there's the task. Um, Right, so I18N with merge requests for me to merge plus deploy. Um, OS license is, what's the license? Okay, A, GPL, B3, issue tracker, not yet. Project contact is uh, translate wiki.net, user Lucas Werkmeister. Uh, without the slash, there we go. Um, logo NA, I think. Project description, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then everything else gets filled in by Translate Wiki. Um, and then what happens is someone from Translate Wiki will look at this, um, maybe have some questions. I think this one was done during the Wikimedia Hackathon, so I just probably answered some questions. Um, 
while sitting at the same t table as Zipant, but otherwise, um, that yeah. So you make a request on Translate Wiki um, via the Fabricator task, and uh, on Fabricator you can log in with your all Wikimedia account, by the way. Um, and what happens then, once it's all been set up, is uh, TranslateWiki imports the messages into uh, pages on translatewiki.net, like this one. Um, and then people can start translating it. Uh, you can link to the translation page uh, on your tools documentation. Uh, and then once translation has come in, TranslateWiki will uh, send merge requests against the GitLab repo that you specified, like for instance, GitLab. Tool forge repos, uh, what's it, wiki data image positions, merge requests. There's a bunch of closed ones there. Um, looks like this. And then you can look at the changes if you want. Follows the latest one. Okay, so someone changed, translated two more messages in Chinese. Uh, this person did that. Um, you'll see that the pipeline passed. So this is. Uh, what the GitLab CI looks like. If the pipeline didn't pass, then you should definitely not merge it because that means um, that some of the translations have issues and then you'll just have to look at um, the console output and figure out what was wrong with it. Uh, I think that happened in one merge request recently-ish, if I can find it. Um, There we go. Uh, so here I had to make one fix. What? Oh. Oh, I think. Uh, so this page doesn't exist. This is Wikidata image positions, right? So if I look at the git log itn uk.json. Hmm. I don't remember what happened there. I think this was someone whose translations got mass deleted or something. Anyway, what's unfortunate is now I have no idea what the difference is that I uh, had to fix there. Um, I mean, no, we can see it here, can't we? Uh, on uk.json. Yeah, so in this case, there was just a space inside the brackets uh, for link syntax. So that's not something we've actually seen yet, but um, you can also have uh, links where the URL is a, a variable. In this case, the translation had a space there so that the link wasn't properly recognized and the translation test started failing. So I edited it. Uh, that's why my name shows up up here um, and just fixed that and then waited for a few days for the next merge request or for the merge request to be updated and then uh, actually merge it. And then in this case, in the meantime, the page actually got uh, deleted, which is... Uh, slightly unfortunate. If I look at the page deletion log, yeah, mass deletion of pages added by this user. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, there was something else I wanted to show. Uh, yeah. So in this case, I had to add a commit actually because someone translated the message into a language which is not supported by the uh, Babel library. Um, and in this case, you will have to define this custom language code to Babel thing in your translations config and define a fallback for that. Uh, there's some more documentation for that um, in the docs somewhere. I don't remember exactly where. Um, yeah, uh, that's just something you might have to do. Like if you see an error um, in the translation tests about an unknown language code, you might have to map it to a known language code. Um, yeah. Anyway, I think I got a bit distracted there. Um, once the translate wiki setup is done, you will start getting merge requests like this. Most of the time, hopefully, they just work and you can merge them. If CI doesn't work for any reason, you'll have to uh, fix it somehow, uh, whether that is by fixing the translation on translatewiki.net and then waiting for a few days until it shows up again, or whether uh, you have to define the map the language codes to something that Babel understands or something else. 
and then each time you get a merge request like that and it looks good, uh, you merge it and then you deploy it however you normally deploy your tool. Um, and then you get translations that way. And like we create image positions was made translatable during the hackathon, which is not that long ago and already uh, has translations into 28 languages, uh, not counting EN and QQQ there, uh, which is pretty nice. So if I uh, just count the lines, actually, No, if I just count the lines in those two, uh, and then in everything else.json, so we have a thousand lines minus about a hundred, um, minus a little bit for like opening and closing base and JSON and the author lines, whatever, like roughly 800 lines of translations or 700 lines of translations already in a few months, which is really, really nice. Uh, there's a lot of dedicated translators on TranslateWiki, and yeah, with this library, you can work together with them. I think I've rambled for long enough there. Uh, I hope this was useful. Um, yeah. Uh, hopefully, enjoy using Toolforge i18n. Uh, let me know if there are any issues, and otherwise, yeah, have a nice day.